Yes. Yeah. So, with further, without further ado, <laughs> we, we will go back um, to Joshua chapter 19. And we're looking at the territory of Simeon, which is hearing with acceptance. And we talked about Beersheba being the place of the oath. And the oath is built on the seven lambs, isn't it? And then there's the plant, the lamb is seen, then the planting of the tree. And then the Akadar is where the father takes the son to sacrifice him. The ward is put on his back and he's on the altar, which is the type of Jesus Christ going to the cross in the very area and being raised from the dead. Okay, so the next one you can see on your notes, we've got verse two. So they had as their inheritance be a Sheba. So part of my inheritance is the oath of the seven lambs, okay? And um, I, I'm aware that um, my saviour hung on a tree and there's a tree planted before there is somebody die. Isn't that lovely in Midrash? The tree is planted in 21 before the Akadar, which is a type of Christ, dying on a tree thousands of years later. And uh, so they had as their inheritance Beersheba or Sheba. Now, the word Sheba here, we've written that, it's okay, Sue, is report. <laughs> report. Now, a while ago, you mentioned something about Sheba, didn't you, in sevens? Can you remember? It doesn't matter. Huh? No, no. Right. <laughs> Can I, just, can I just say something here? When you're doing these things, and they take hours, I know that you probably think, I'm just reading a book, and I'm not. When they're not absolutely sure, they just put the word report. Okay, Sheba. It was the queen of Sheba that went to Solomon. And she loaded the camels, and she went there. Okay. But when I've just put that word there, it's because there's not a lot of information on that. So that between the ancient and the modern, they're still, I mean, nobody's ever gonna, nobody's ever gonna redo this because they, they just don't. So we're going to go straight from uh, report to Sheba, to Molodar, okay? And Molodar marvelously means birth. And I've written here, we are born of the spirit and born of the word. And this is our qualification for communion. We have been given a new nature capable of taking hold of the things of God and enjoying them. So like we said, the first three, we've got the oath, the report and a birth. Isn't that lovely? Well, the report could be who has heard the report of the Lord, to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed. Okay. Now, the next one we've already covered in verse three, and it's one of our favorites, and it is Hazar Shul which is the jackal pen. Remember what the jackals are? The jackals are those things that howl at you in the wilderness. And this is a picture of the restraint needed for the flesh. And I'll read this little bit to you. When you're looking at this here, the way that they've done them is groups of numbers. And if you look in number two, be a Sheba, would you agree, is number one, the oath. The lamb is the beginning. Sheba is number two, the report, and Molodar is a birth, yes? And then you come to another set of three. When you come to the second set of three, it's the second person, the Trinity. So I've gone on my numbers. I don't know if you want to do this, ladies, if you ever show anybody. Bea Sheba is one, Sheba is two, Molodar is three. I want to show you something. Hazar Shul is four, Bala is five, Ezem is six, Elto Lad is seven, Bethel is eight, Hormar is nine, Ziglag is ten, Beth Markabath is eleven, Hazar Susa is twelve, Beth Leboath is thirteen, and Sharahen is fourteen. Have you all agreed with that? Yes. Read the next verse. <laughs> yeah. There isn't. It's 14. Yeah. It's not a mistake. It's the way it's been recorded. 13 is the number of, basically, it's rebellion, isn't it? Yeah. So as we go through this, it will become apparent. Don't you think those things are wonderful in the word of God? Yes. See, they don't confuse me. I love them. 
because I think these are the mysteries of God that I don't understand. It clearly says... No. Yeah, it's in the original. And what they're saying is it was on a Jew's life to make sure they wrote this down. They wouldn't have made that error. This has been recorded. They give 14 names and say there's 13. Now, these things I find very interesting. I can lie awake and think about them all night because that's interesting, isn't it? 14 is the number of divine... Uh, it's deliverance, isn't it? But it says 13 cities with... Their... I was doing this when I went away in December and I've moved one page further. All this... I just keep looking at it and looking at it and see because I believe there is a message for me in my life. So let's go back to number four, which is really number one of the second three. Because yes. you go, be a Sheba one, Sheba two, Moladar three, Hazer Shuel one, Bala two, Esam three, Eldahad one, Bethel two, Hormar three. You'll always break it down into threes, three people of the Trinity. And you'll see something that's of the cross, something that's of the spirit, and something that's at oneness. And the one, oh, it's your James has just gone by. Bless him. So at the beginning is an oath. And who's the oath from? The oath is given to us from God. Would we agree? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I've written here, Hazer Shul is the jackal pen. This starts the series of the second three. So they're saying, you've got the oath. You recognize the lamb. You've heard the good report and you've been born, birth, born of the spirit. That's the first, under the father. Then you come to the second part, which has got to require the work of the cross. Hazar Shul is the jackal pen. This starts the series of the second three and speaks, of course, of sin, because Jesus is the second person of the Trinity who took our sin. Well, I don't know about you. This all makes it so wonderfully tied up, do you think? For, so the, the second person of the Trinity is the one who will deliver us from the power of which there must be deliverance. Therefore, we see this very name. The jackal pen speaks of the restraint upon our flesh. <laughs> so the jackal pen, if we pen in our anger, pen in our, our grief, pen in that experience that happened to us, we are restraining the flesh. And we'll only restrain the flesh when we are of the spirit. Okay, let's just turn to Galatians 5.17, just for a moment, please. I know these are basic teachings and you already know, but it's good to look to say, isn't it marvellous that you're going to find the jackal pen restrainer in the second set of three? The second person, the Trinity. It'll all become as clear as mud soon. We're back in Galatians 5, verse 17. We're going to start at 16. Does this help you, Carol? It does help you. Because you, you can't defy it. And as we're going to go through them, it just keeps bringing the second sun up when it's to do with the breakout of the flesh. And when you see the next one, wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and the land given is showing you here through the names that your spiritual life with Christ is not all the same on an even plane. There are moments where you think, oh, my relationship with the Lord is... And then, oh, my, there's a difficult... That, that's what this is all about. But it's all moving. It's all process. It's all you. Every trial I've got and you've got is for me to possess more land. Hallelujah. I've got to pen the jackals. They're, they ha they're like howl at you in the wilderness because we're making our journey to Zion, aren't we? Now, look at this, Carol. But I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. That's what the jackal pen is all about. I want, because just look in verse 15. 
Well, look at verse 14. The, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word in the statement, you shall love, that's agape, you shall agape your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, take care lest you be consumed by one another. So the opposite to us loving one another, let's just go back to Joshua chapter 18. Does anyone ever wonder how this work continues? <laughs> It has to be born of the spirits for us to carry on, doesn't it? Joshua chapter 19, because look, ladies, the next one in the second set under the, the three of Christ is Bala, withered, old, decayed, an adjective for worn out with age and use. From the root balk, meaning to fail, to fall away, of garments worn out and of men with age and sickness. Isn't that amazing? You see, for the answer for the one who is withered, old and decayed, you're in the second set of three, which is under Christ. Yeah. God the Father has given the oath, given the good report. There's a birth. You are now committed into the care of the only one who can defeat every work of darkness in your life. So do you recognize yourself in the flesh as withered and old, yeah. Yeah. decayed? Yeah. It's an adjective. An adjective is a describing word of a noun, yes? And you don't and it, recognize them until you know what the first three are because you wouldn't recognize them. No, no, you don't. And the Lord didn't deliver this word mm -hmm. until he gave the answer. Yeah. Okay, he's already given the answer. Yeah. The answer is the oath with the lamb. Lovely. Okay, and the tree being planted. Yeah. Isn't that amazing that that comes after that? Withered old, decayed, an adjective for worn out with age and use from the root belt, meaning to fail, to fall away, of garments worn out and of men with age and sickness. I'll leave you to find those scriptures yourself because we want to push on. This also being in the second section is under the number which speaks both of the cross and salvation. Isn't that wonderful? Do you see that? Do you see? You could stay here for a thousand years, couldn't you, just looking at that? Because this is God's um, how specific he is. He speaks both the cross and salvation and reminds us, here we are, our old man has been crucified with Christ that the body of sin might be destroyed and all, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Amen. Now, the next name pushing on is Esm and it means strength as the strength of a bone. From the root word atsam, meaning to be strong and powerful. When you are withered and old in the natural man, you gain strength. Because it's number three of the second set. Jesus rose on the third day. This is a man, I took this from a man who's writing in a book in 1800 living in Birmingham. It, the truth never changes. If you don't see yourself withered, old and decayed and recognise that you've been crucified with Christ, you won't have the strength of resurrection. You'll keep going in your own strength. Does that make sense? And it, isn't it great that it's in the third place? On the third day, the mountain was raised up out of the sea of corruption. This name in the third place is under the name of the spirit and resurrection from the dead. Strength, the ability to enter unhindered into the very who's come into the very portion that God has made our own and to enjoy it with God. God wants you to enjoy your life with him so that you don't prostitute yourself for anything less than his company. Now the second, the third section, which is Elto lad, look at this. I don't know if you're getting it. El Tolad means God is begetter or God of the generation. This is new life on the third set of three. Does that bless anybody here or are you all finding it complicated? Isn't it wonderful? Only God can do that, can't he? Only God can do that. God of the, the third set of three now speaks of realized consecration. We have been set apart um, for God. Okay, so when we've looked at, <laughs> you see, that's right. Then the next one we're going to go on to is 
don't know how I've done this, Julie. I mean, Elto Lad, that's right. The L for Elto Lad means the mighty one. And we sang today El Gibor El Elyon, God of all strength. But he's not the God of all strength till you recognize you're withered and old without him. Yeah. I need new life. I need the third day life. I need resurrection life and resurrection power. Okay. And then I've put here. Now look at this. I've written this down. He is able, despite all the hindrances, to make good his claim upon our lives. You're full of fear, but he's still going to work his plan and purpose out. You're full of rebellion, but he's still got a plan and purpose for your life, which he's going to work out. And it is put here. Next to it, next to El Tolad, think of the mighty one, is Bethel. And Bethel means separated unto God. He must separate you from everything else around you so that he can deal personally with you. And our best days are the days when we sense that God is dealing with us and he is going to deal with us by one-to-one, -one, by ourselves. He is determined to deal with us, but only in a way that will bring us his blessing. Now, can you see? It's Bethel is the eighth one. And then Hormar, meaning ban or separated to destruction. Isn't that interesting? Hormar is where we get the word anathema from the root to destroy utterly. We are saved, we're full of resurrection power, but those coming in that don't know Christ at the moment are in a position to be destroyed utterly forevermore. So when we go through this list, we can see, I want to serve Christ, but I want to live in the inheritance of the good land so that those that are coming in that have been separated, they've separated, they're separated from God by their sin. Okay? So, when we go on to the next one. Now, look in verse 5. Look at this here. Ziglag means the pressure of the wave. The wave. This name indicates an hour of trial, which is permitted to test everything that stands for God. Now, it gets really interesting. The, the twelfth one is Hazar Susa. Hazar is enclosure. This is called the horse enclosure. But we have to look at this in context. If you just turn in your Bibles, please, to Proverbs 20, verse 7. We are told by the Lord in this, if you look in Psalm chapter 20, the heading is prayer for victory over enemies. But you see, there's a warning here. When the pressure of the wave comes, we are not to do the next two things. Look what it says, 20 verse 7. Some boast in chariots and some in horses, but not us. The Lord has separated you so that you will boast in the name of the Lord our God. So you're not to want a better chariot or a better lawyer or more money or anything else. He's going to show you that you are separated unto me when the pressure of the wave comes. I don't want you to look for chariots and I don't want you to look for horses. I want you to trust me. Because the next one, look, you've got the house of chariots and the horse enclosure. And if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 16... He's allowing the church to be judged, isn't he? God is judging the church, but he's allowing the church in this country to be dwindled, isn't he? Yeah. Deuteronomy, darling, 17 verse 16. Look what the Lord says. He doesn't want you to have strength in anything else but him. Verse 16. Moreover, he shall not multiply. This is a king, you see. Let's just start at 14. When you enter the land which the Lord your God gives you and you possess it, number one, live in it, and you say, I will set a king over me like all the nations who are around me. That's like King Saul. You shall surely set a king over you whom the Lord your God chooses, one from among your countrymen. So he won't be God from heaven. He will be a normal man who will end up in the house of quiet with a female deity. 
You shall set as king over yourself. You may not put a foreigner over yourselves who is not your countryman. Moreover, he shall not multiply horses for himself, nor shall he chase, cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses. Since the Lord has said to you, you shall never again return that way. Do you understand? God, and I know it in our situation, God is actually saying, don't look for multiply clever men lawyers yeah. whatever don't look for chariots or horses yeah. i have separated you unto myself yeah. under the pressure of this wave and i am going to be the one who is going to deliver you now the next one can anyone see this the 13th one is the house of lionesses does it look like you're going to be ripped apart in your trial the house of lionesses they're the hungry ones aren't they who go out but just to finish, this is why number 13 and 14, we're only finishing this bit, by the way, I haven't quite, 13 and 14, we're saying 14 names were written down, but it says there were 13 cities. And this is the quandary. Is it to be the house of lionesses where you get ripped apart? Or is it Sharahen, a dwelling of grace? A perfect dwelling place from the word S-R-A, meaning to dwell, to encamp and I've written there 13 cities with their villages although 14 cities aren't there is that last one put there because all those cities are going through a trial and you're tempted to look for horses and chariots and you think you're in the house with the hungry lions but then instead they've added a 14th to a list of 30 I think that's I think that's God I think that's our father dwelling of grace a perfect dwelling place, meaning to dwell, to encamp. There are mysteries that we all never know. And there isn't a man who can tell you any different because nobody knows. This has been committed into the care of us as Christians by the power of the Holy Spirit. I love the way that 14th is added on. Do you? Because it says there's only 13 cities. But the 14th one is obtained by grace. I think that's brilliant. Is it the, is it, is it the New Jerusalem then? Is it the city of Zion? Is it the work of the Holy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, we're not going to get very much further, but see these. We will definitely will finish the hearing today, won't we? <coughs> Pardon me. When you get to verse 7, I know that you think you've been up Snowden, Everest, K2. We think we've been up all these today. Let's start on with some more. In verse 7, we've got Ein. And ein means the eye, and it means to perfectly search out the word of truth. Let's just turn to Psalm 139, please, 23 to 24. Psalm 139, verses 23 to 24. Would you agree that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God? And you say, even though today you may not remember anything about this, but there'll be a time, I do believe, when the Holy Spirit will bring these things back. Yeah. I, and I'm tempted to find someone to really help me, put some strength in a chariot going by, Lord. I'm going to do all I can to buy the biggest chariot with the biggest spikes and wheels. And the Lord says, I won't let you. That's like Paul saying, don't look at anything from the world. No, no, that's right. No, that's right. That's right. So we said about the ears, now he brings us to a place which is Ain, which means I. And it, so let's just, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. This is a very important place in the land of Simeon. Not only are we hearing, but we are searching. And if you remember, the eyes are the teachers. The eyes are the teachers. That's why the lamps are in the room and the light is to be in our eyes. And if you go back to Joshua 19, can you see the next one that comes along? For the one who seeks. Can you see Rimon? Rimon is pomegranate. Pomegranate, seek the word. See the word. Search the word. Isn't that lovely? But the word Rimon, meaning pomegranate, also means very high. And remember, the pomegranates were on the, held on a hundred chains on top of the big witnesses, the big pillars outside of the temple. It is a beautiful, it's beautiful in flower and packed with many seeds. Now, the previous city has been the eye. It's the eye 
to see the seed. And there are many seeds in the pomegranate. The pomegranate is found in the high priest's garment and it always speaks of the gospel and its re results. But the leaf of the pomegranate tree is forever green. The seeds of future fruit are found everywhere in the fruit. The seeds, when you have a pomegranate and you cut it in half, all the potential new pomegranates are in there. And yet the eye has been given in connection with the seed. Remember the pomegranate is called the crown of the Torah. And also the pomegranate here is always what is on the hem of the high priest's garment. So hearing Simeon, it says here, is also one of the cities that he is given is an eye to see, to seek and to search. And what does he find? The living word of God, seeds in a bloody liquid, full of life. A precious picture of our word and testimony. Now have a look at this. The next one. So we've got an eye in verse 7. Then we've got a pomegranate, which speaks the word. And then we've got ether. Ether, ether, it means prayer. If you see Jesus more in his word, your prayer, you pray more. You understand the potential of God. And it also means abundance. From the root athar, meaning to multiply. Isn't this lovely? To entreat, to pray for, to burn incense. This speaks of effectual, unceasing prayer. Now we've nearly finished this. And um, the next one is smoke. Ashan, are you following me with your notes, yeah? Ashan is, means smoke. This city is to remind us of our weakness. And we are reminded that we need prayer ourselves. Mm. And this is a real blessing here because... Uh, strange. So I, um, right. I've put here, and it says here, four cities with their villages. So the I, with the word of God, the prayer, and the awareness of weakness, is named four cities with their villages. Four is the number of human weakness, needing oneness, which is God. <laughs> okay, you're doing very well, ladies, because there's that many interruptions today. Okay, now when we get to, but this is worth it, if you hang in here till verse 8. And it's really touching. And all the villages which were around these cities, as far as Balathbia, Ramar of the Negev, is the south. It's the love country. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the sons of those who hear, according to their families. But it gets better. Balathbia means mistress of the well. The lady was found at the well. Where have you seen Beer before? You've seen him in uh, Beer is in Numbers. Numbers, please. Chapter 21, verse 16. Have you ever heard of the phrase, good godder? Ever, have you ever, ever, ever heard people say, good godder? No, come on, I'm old. Have you never heard people go, oh, good godder? Yeah, I've only heard before. Has nobody ever heard anyone say that? But where, where have I grown up? <laughs> Something not very nice happens and they go, I know it's not very nice, I'm not using it as blasphemy, but they go, good Godder. No. It's one of the 42 stations of the Israelis. But you know why it's good Godder? Good God means, oh no! Yeah. That's where the fiery snakes came out. And I love that. These words have been handed down through generations. And the generations are... When my nan used to say, oh, good Godder. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's good God. Well, it's, you've heard good God, but it's actually good Godder. Good Godder. Good, it's a Hebrew name. Yes, and it's a blasphemy now. But doesn't it make sense that that's where the people started to be stung by snakes? And down through the generations, those people, I believe, would have known the word better than we do. And they would have had these, uh, that is a terrible thing. The snakes are biting me now. It makes sense, doesn't it, to these things? Well, it does, it does to me. Anyway, Numbers chapter 21. This is good Godder. And uh, 
where the, the snakes start to bite. See in verse 6, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. That is good Godder. Isn't that amazing? So when people did exclaim it, like your great grands or great granddads, I think they may have been taught something terrible happened at that place and the snakes came out to get us. Mm. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about. But the answer to the snake is verse 8. Make, then the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent, set it on a stand at the cross, and it shall come about that everyone who is bitten, when he looked at it, he shall live. And Moses made a bronze serpent, set it on the standard, and it came about that if a serpent bit any man, when he looked to the bronze serpent, he lived. Hallelujah. That's where the Pythonic spirit comes from. Now, when you get to verse 16, there's good news. They are, he says, they continued from there. They continue to beer. And in your margin where it says one, there is a well. That is the well where the Lord said to Moses, assemble the people that I may give them water. Okay, this is so, this, this is why she's mistress, Balath, mistress Baal. Balath is mistress, not husband. Balath, beer, she's a mistress of the well. And it says, then Israel sang at the well. This is a type of Christ ministering to the woman at the well thousands of years later because he's the one who was on the pole. Then Israel sang this song, Spring up, O well, sing to it. The well which the leaders sang, which the nobles of the people dug with the scepter and with their staffs. And from the wilderness they continued to Matanar. Okay, so when you go back to Joshua chapter 19, you have got Baalath beer. Baalath is wife of beer. Something good happens at beer because the snake was put on the pole. So it's a wonderful name, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. The mistress of the well. But the mistress of the well is right next to Ramar. Who else lived at Ramar? Sorry. Well done. And it is a woman. Deborah. It's the place of elevation. The woman at the well is elevated. It gets better. It's the well of the dry desert, the Negev, the Southland. And I've written what beautiful teachings these last four names are, but really there's three, so you could cross that out. They bring us in the land of the hearing one. The mistress of the well, because of Christ on the pole, must of necessity be found in Ramah. The woman at the well must be elevated and exalted. She is to be the exalted one of the dry south, the wilderness. Isn't that lovely? That's you and that's me. It's the will of God that the mistress of the well, the one who seeks where Christ can come and talk to her in the middle of the day, must be elevated. And where she elevated, she's elevated in the desert. But even that is the love country. In the midst of the snakes and the scorpions, as she makes her journey, she is the one who is exalted. Isn't that lovely? Amen. And I put here, this one only needs the water to develop into magnificent fruitfulness. We are called to praise God constantly for causing us to be thirsty enough to go in search of water. You never saw the source of Egypt's water, but we have a need of the Holy Spirit. We have a Father full of grace and patient ministry, which we saw clearly in the very first of Simeon's cities, which is Beersheba, meaning the well of the oath. Because it says in verse 9 again, it says, Simeon received an inheritance in the midst of confession and praise. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. He wouldn't have those no. mistakes. No. Only in the midst of confession and praise do we find Christ. Yes. And that's when the snake yeah. blows out. Yeah. And that is why, after all your abuse, my darling, you have stood for Jesus all these years. Some of us will just not be listening very well now because we're tired. I don't know. I'm old. 
I never get tired. I'm wide awake, ready to go because I haven't got enough. I haven't got enough of Jesus and I want more of him. And I see him here. I see him when you heard people exclaim, good God. I always used to wonder where good God uh, came from. And now I know. It was a terrible exclamation. Is the Lord has sent the fiery serpents that bite in us and we're dying. Wasn't a blasphemy. It was a no, good God, good God. Good God, uh. yeah. yeah, that's right. It's not blasphemy, yeah. but it's used as blasphemy. Yeah. Ladies, I'm going to very quickly go with you down this list of the territory of Zebulun. There's only a few verses, but please. Zebulun means dwelling. I'll leave you to look at the notes with that. But this is about a remnant. Would you say that you are a remnant yes, now? Yes. Yeah, we're remnants, aren't we? Yeah. And we, we can see very clearly that as the days get worse, we are going to be even more of a remnant. If you just turn in your Bibles, please, to Jeremiah 41. There's a special place for the remnants, and it is the place we know of Himham. Himham. Je Jeremiah 41. I've got a sound back on this, and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it, so... Zebulun, we've had the hearing man, now we've got the dwelling man, and you'll be pleased to know we've nearly finished. But yeah. <laughs> you go really quick. Hey, there's a remnant here. And this is Yaakov Prash many years ago, 20. Look in verse 16. Don't worry about the context, it's all about the coming judgment. And there's a remnant. And 41, darling, of Jeremiah. I'm going to try and move that down. If you go to verse 16. Then Johanan, the son of Carrier, and all the commanders of the forces that were with him, took from Mizpah all the remnants of the people whom he had recovered from Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, after he had struck down Gedaliah, the son of Ahakim. That is the men who were soldiers, the women, the children, the eunuchs, whom he had brought back from Gibeon. You've got a remnant, and they went and stayed in Gareth Himham. And in your margin, you've got, by verse 17, you've got a number one for the Hebrew word. It is called the lodging place of Himham. But the name of Himham means the lodge of pining. The remnant is in a place where it pines. Things are getting difficult. Yeah. Which it, but look what we it have says. This scripture just before, Bethany, I know, I know, I know. They went and stayed in Gareth Himham, the lodge of pining. But look at the next bit. We've done this before. Where is the lodge of pining situated next to? It is beside Bethlehem, yeah. in order to proceed into Egypt. There's always the provision of the bread and the very place where the Saviour is born, right where the remnant is pining. Little did you know, Sue, that last night the relation of Pat would come in here and you sat right up. And thank God you're here and you looked so lovely last night. You sat there, he's seen you as a witness to Jesus Christ in this room, which is enough to blow your head off. It's, it's wonderful news. He normally would have found you in that book. I know he would. And this is the great blessing of this place. That man came into the room to find you there, Sue, and you were here in the right place. This can be the Lodge of Pining, yeah. but it's right beside Bethlehem. Yeah. Our Saviour was born in Bread the house of bread. bread. And what we said is if the gospel for your body, you need the bread. For your mind, you need to do a logarithm, an analogue summe. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yes, he was. No, it is absolutely wonderful. Now, can I just show you the prayer? Look at this. It's called the warning against going to Egypt, the next chapter, 42. And when it said, then all the commanders of the forces, Johanan, the son of Kareah, Jezaniah, the son of Hoshiah, and all the people, both small and great, approached. Now, look at this. And said to Jeremiah, the prophet, Please let our petition come before you and pray for us to the Lord your God. That is for all this remnant, because we are left but a few out of many, as your own eyes now see us. 
that the Lord your God may tell us the way in which we should walk and the thing that we should do. Isn't that lovely? That's the cry of the remnant, to keep seeking the Lord. We're here, we're pining, we know we're next to the Bethlehem, but will you please show us? Verse 4, then Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard you. Behold, I'm going to pray to the Lord your God in accordance with your words. And it will come about that the whole message which the Lord will answer you, I, the prophet, will tell you, I will not keep back a word from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, may the Lord be a true and faithful witness against us if we do not act in accordance with the whole message with which the Lord your God will send you to us. Whether it is pleasant or unpleasant, we will listen to the voice of the Lord our God, yes. to whom we are sending you, in order yes. that it may go well with us when we listen yes. to the voice of the Lord our God. Now, isn't yes. it interesting, ladies? The next verse, it came about at the end of how many days? Ten, Ten days Ten. that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Yes. I'll leave you to read that. Ten means nothing lacking man's responsibility to respond to God. Yes. So the remnant of those who are seeking and searching now, if you go back to Joshua 19, we'll go through it. It's, it's very quick, but look at these names. And you, I believe, there's quite a few of them, but actually, yeah, just look at this. Verse 1, verse 10. Now the third lot came up for the sons of Zebulun, who are the dwelling ones. It means to dwell with for habitation. The sons of Zebulun, according to their families, and the territory of their inheritance was as far as Zared. Zared means remnant, which is why I've just read that to you. So the one who's dwelling, the one who's heard, the one who's dwelling, it says here, his territory is as far as Zared. And Zared, Zared means survivor. One who has escaped destruction. Isn't that wonderful? That is you and I. We have escaped destruction. But let's go back to the beginning. Then their border went up to the west and Marilar. Marilar, isn't this interesting, ladies, means shaking. Place of concussions. I feel like somebody's hit me. From the root Raal. This is for the people who are dwelling in the land that the Lord has given them, who have heard, who have seen, who have grasped hold of the hem of the garment of the high priest and found the seeds there. But now he speaks about a place of concussion, shaking, trembling, murmuring of reproach. And they touched the brook, look, it says here, and it then touched Dabisheth, okay? Um, and they were all going to the west. I, I do hope you take these. Can you see that? Verse 11. Then their border went up to the west. Well, when something's gone west, the sun's gone down. It's going wrong. And to Marilar, shaking. The remnant, isn't this great? Is shaking. It looks like the sun is going down. And their border went up to the west and to Marilash. It then touched Dabashalath, the murmuring of reproach or the bunch of a camel. Yes. I know. And reached to the brook that is before Jokneem, the possession of the people. Now it keeps turning back, look. It turned from Zared to the east, mm -hmm. towards the sunrise. Oh. So the remnant is the ones when everything is going west are going to turn to the east yeah. towards the sunrise as that's why you're here today yeah. as that's far as sorry that's yes because that you can say it looks like the church is going west when they're no longer preaching the gospel they're no longer breaking bread they're bringing in the disco yeah. lights they're having coffee mornings that's not what we're doing we're painstakingly going through these words that were written down thousands yeah. of years ago but i see myself and my own christian experience do you see your christian experience in these names can yeah. you see why god put them there yeah. well it, it's better than any novel i'm not saying that god's word is a novel 
But to me, it's exciting because I've written them down. I write them down late at night, the names. Then I begin to research what they mean. And then I look at them again. And then I write on a piece of paper. I am a part of the remnant. I do live very close to the bread. I am to know that I, when everything is going west, I'm to turn as a remnant and a survivor. And I'm to go looking towards the sun. Does that make sense? Is everybody hot now? Flagging, hot exhausted and we're only reading the bible the lady who came said she found it a bit deep last time but the truth i don't think it's deep this is not my opinion this is not my ideology we're just going through a series of instructions of land that i must i must take up the land of being a remnant I might be the only one in my family that wants to go, and I was for 30 odd years, but I'm going like with your family. You're still going. It yeah. looks like all's oh, going west for Lou Goff, but truly, because she's a remnant, you're facing the sun. Does it make sense? Yeah. I think it's absolutely yeah. riveting, yeah. marvelous. As I said to you a thousand times, better than a facelift. <laughs> this yeah. is the thing. If we're going to define ourselves regarding what consecration to God means, it is. By yourself alone, God is asking you to be a remnant of one. So we've got remnant of one, 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 but we've joined together today. But in our families, in our work, in the marketplace, wherever we are, I glory in Sardis. I'm dwelling as a remnant of one. I think that's wonderful. Do you? Okay, we're nearly finishing. This is our correct starting point. Our starting point, and it turned from Sarod, the remnant turns from Sarod eastward towards the rising of the sun. Now, we finish on this, but in the next one, number five, as, so towards the sunrise in verse 12, as far as the border of Chisloth Table, which means the loins, the strength of purpose. Chisloth is from the Hebrew word kassel, Meaning confidence. Yeah. yeah. But you see, my confidence has come. I'll stand alone. Yeah. I'll stand alone. You yeah. will stand alone. And if we have to be here, and the Lord has given us this wonderful place, yeah. as a remnant of one, we will be here with a thing outside. But look at this, ladies. This is your father. The remnant of one with strength and confidence makes his way to Dabareth. And Dabareth means pasture. Isn't that wonderful? There is grass to eat. And he went up from his pasture to Japhia, which means shining. The splendor of the dawn already greets the one on this higher ground. Yes. And I've put here, Dabareth means, look, a sheep walk. I am the good shepherd, you are my sheep. But the sheep walk, Dabareth is from Dabar, as Deborah is from Dabar, the word, married to the light. Lovely. Meaning to lead flocks out to pasture, but it means to speak and to promise. And that's what we said to that man last night. We spoke to him yeah. and we told him that the Lord would take care of him. Japhia, as we looked at, means shining, illustrious, from the root, ya see these are real Hebrew words, Japhia is from Japha, meaning to shine. Uh, the next one is Gath Hefer, and Gath Hefer means the wine press digging, or the wine press of the well. Now isn't this interesting? It's right next to the wine press digging here is um, right next to S. Kazim. What do you think of that? I'm going to finish on this because I can see you're all exhausted, but please take the notes out. Do you see you can finish here? Yeah. S. Kazim means the occasion for a captain. But the occasion for the captain is next to the wine press. Yes. Can you see this is just too wonderful for words? Beautiful. When Jesus comes to judge the wine press, he will be the captain. Yeah. And it is the word, yeah. time of the judge. 
a compound of F for F Kazin with a Hebrew letter meaning time, local, season, opportunity. And Katzin meaning a it's the opportunity for a judge and a prince to come at the time of the wine press, the gathering in of the grapes. From the word katash, meaning to cut off. Well, he's going to deal with everybody when he comes as the captain. This goes out. We finish here. We finish at the end of <laughs> verse 13. It proceeds, the occasion of the captain proceeds to Rimon. It's going back. The word of God. The captain. And then look what it also means here. The occasion of a captain literally in the Hebrew means the outermost man. Sorry? Sorry? Yes. The outermost man, the one who stands out from the rest. Jesus Christ. The, the remnant. He had a remnant. Yeah, the one who stands Exactly, we're the remnants of one who stands, literally in Hebrew, with the outermost man. Then, we'll finish there. I think you've probably taken it. Oh, I must just say something there. <laughs> because the next one, Rimen, is northward to the pomegranate, thinking of the high priest. He has to reach the wanderer. Do you understand? If we know all this, we don't have to know it. But if I know it, I can sit with that John Paul. I could sit with him and clean him up by the word of God and show him very clearly. You can't get away from the order. Yeah. The wine press is the occasion for the captain. And he's coming as the outermost man. No one can reach him other than through the blood. But he's still a man with seeds and pomegranates of the high priest. And he's looking for Nia. And Nia is the wanderer. Lovely. From the root meaning the wanderer. Obtained by, look at the, look at the next one. You see, if you've got Sharon here, you carry on for a moment. The wanderer, after the wanderer near, verse 14, the border circled around it on the north, which is mystery. This is me, obtained by grace. It is. <laughs> to Hanathon, obtained by, and it means obtained, the wanderer obtains grace. And it means extraordinary free gift. But this border of grace clings to Rimon to reach the next one, which is Ifteal, God opens. Isn't that lovely? Do you like it, Sue? Yeah. Whoever would have thought you'd have understood it. When I interviewed you at the age of 15, sweetie, if God could have said to me, at the age of 63, you'll be standing in a little shop that you will have been able to buy through the grace of God in Rugeley. And the girl that you interviewed at 15 will be there in the Bible study and her son will be sharing a house with you because your husband will have gone. Can make, you can't make it up, can you? So you look at me and think I'm over the top. Isn't God over the top? Can it really be that the one who has obtained grace and the seeds reaches the wonder and the, and the wonder obtains grace and that border clings to rim on the pomegranate and the pomegranate is on the thing of the high priest? Isn't it great? I'm going to stop there because... I like Joshua 17, 23. Do you? Yeah. I'm delighted. Joshua 17, 23, there isn't one. Have you got to verse 23? Yeah. That means you've not been listening. <laughs> yeah, I can only say to you ladies, please take the notes and just ponder before the Lord because they are absolutely wonderful, aren't they really? We've got the belly coming. We've got the belly next to the sorcery. And the only when the belly's got inward realisation can it deal with the sorcery. All these things are in these words and they're all in your notes. And I, I thank you for coming. Um, we could go on forevermore. But I hope you remember just how, you know, obtained by grace, the wanderer receives the message, obtains the grace and makes it to the very city that says God will open. Yeah, finish now. Go on. Yeah. 
Father, um, these exhausted people, um, the, we're in the desert, Lord, and we need to remember that, don't we? We are in the desert. It is red hot. There are snakes around our feet. There are scorpions. The palm trees are waving. The ministry growth is here today. The water of Elam is here today. The ministry of the 70 is here. We want to be equipped by you, by the power of your Holy Spirit and the knowledge of your glorious word. Oh, and your word has been so good today, Father. Your word, this cannot be added to and it cannot be taken away because it's already in divine language. And you have spoken, I believe, today. I'm so thankful, Father, that we couldn't afford a shrink. We're not to go and get horses or chariots or that that we think can help us. You see, they didn't want your son. They wanted a Bible scholar. They didn't want a carpenter. And yet he was the one who would give his life on the tree. And we want to accept in the Holy Spirit these things by faith. And I thank you for every lady who has journeyed through these cities with us today. And we pray that we, you, by your Holy Spirit, will cause these words to be established in our hearts. There is such comfort. There's such encouragement. There's such blessing today in these words that very few commentators have even considered looking at. Yet it was land that was given to Joshua, who was Yeshua. And it was attributed to certain aspects. We've looked at those attributed to ears today, those attributed to what is it like when you dwell with the pomegranate seeds. We could go on forevermore, but we must not. We ask you to bless us, Father, as we eat. We ask you to bless the food to our bodies, our bodies to your service. We truly pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we pray for these people as they go home, that you will give them traveling mercies, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.